Welcome, this is Steve Brennan with Alhambra Investments. I'm joined today with the CEO of Alhambra Investments, Joe Calhoun. We're gonna be talking a little bit about FTX, the blow up of one of the largest crypto uh, exchanges, also uh, one of the largest crypto hedge funds and um, one of the biggest brands in the crypto space. Uh, you know, where I'm gonna kind of get this going is that FTX really was an example of a kind of a, a con man trying to cheat the system. FTX was the system. I mean, um, Sequoia Capital, one of the largest VCs, was an investor. BlackRock, private equity, Tom and Giselle, Tom Brady and Giselle, Shaq, Steve Curry. Um, the spokespeople are Hughes Hughes list. Government um, um, influencers on the payroll. Number two um, donor to the Democratic Party in the last election cycle um, was a CEO. His partner had given also to Republicans in this election cycle. They'd been working with government on regulation on the crypto space. Uh, when you start kind of going down this list, Joe, what, what you see here is, is not some sort of con that everybody was oblivious to, but we know some of the players in the space, they knew better and they were in bed with these guys. Th th this, is, this is where the little guy got screwed um, and the people supposed to be protecting him um, were in bed with these guys. Um, it, it's it's not the first time we've seen something like this. I know um, Madoff, right, was pretty connected to the SEC. In this case, the uh, co-CEO of their hedge fund arm, uh, Meta Research, her father had been the boss of the SEC chair at MIT. Um, these were very connected people. And and the watchdogs really were in bed and taking money from these folks. And, and we really don't know how bad this is. We may never know how bad this is because one of the few use cases of crypto really seems to be a embezzling and money laundering and then they're probably doing that too but i just kind of want to want to get this rolling with you know you know again th 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 this stinks and a lot of little people got hurt yeah i think one of the things that really bothers me uh are the vc funds like sequoia look uh these are guys who are supposed to do due diligence and i will tell you that i looked at what is purportedly a pitch deck for FTX that they use to raise money. And frankly, I, anybody that's been in this business for 10 minutes knows it's fraud. All you have to do is you look at first three or four slides and it's like, oh, okay, this is, first of all, it was amateurish. Second yeah. of all, there was, there was more, you know what? I, I will tell you this, somebody sends me a pitch deck that's got multiple misspellings in the first three slides. Yeah, I'm done. Not happening. Uh, oh, there, there, you can't there, even do a freaking spell check. I'm not interested. Th there's a story while, while that, um, the the, uh, the CEO was talking to Sequoia. Was playing video games, and the Sequoia yeah, actually, was. You know, made a made an impressive note of that of uh, just how. Um, um, well, they um, they took that as a positive. Yeah. Oh, he can do this pitch and also play video games at the same time. Uh, the, the the you know Sequoia had this thing on their on their website where they talked about this meeting they had with him. And essentially, they didn't look at anything. They just talked to the guy. And he, people were like on the call when he was off the call. I guess they were saying something like, I'm so impressed with this guy and I'm all in and all this stuff. I, I, I don't get it. Um, look, I, <laughs> I'll put it this way there's a lot of money missing. We're not talking about a few hundred thousand dollars or a million dollars or several million dollars. We're talking about billions. And nobody right now knows where it is. I don't know if it got lost. We don't know if it got siphoned off. We don't know where it is. We just well, don't. We, we, we do know about 40 million went to um, politicians um, just from the CEO alone. Um, but yeah, you're right. That doesn't add up to a billion. We, we know where some of this went and some of it went right into the people who are supposed to be taking care of taking care of the little guy and watching out well, for the little I, guy. I did read today that uh, Alameda, which was the trading arm, uh, made a $1 billion loan to Sam Bankman Freed and his lieutenant, his second in command, got a $500 million loan. I'd like to know where that money is. Uh, as you said before, one of the things that's, you know, the use case for, for cryptocurrencies is the ability to do things anonymously and to put them in, in ways. Although I will tell you, I think that's actually kind of interesting, you know, this idea of anonym, anonymity on uh, blockchain and, and, and in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. Uh, and the ability to move things around without the authorities knowing actually has proven to be untrue. <laughs> the FBI uh, has the ability to hire hackers too, apparently, and they have recovered a lot of what's been stolen over the last couple of years. But uh, 
maybe Sam Bankman Freed is, you know, in another category where he's able to, to get it somewhere where, where nobody can find it. I don't know. But yeah, look, I, I think that, that, like I said, the one that really sticks out to me is Sequoia because these are guys who are supposed to be looking out for their limited partners and they didn't do it. They just didn't. And, and look, you know, it's going to get, it's going to get glossed over. Look, guys in the venture capital industry are going to say, well, you know what? Look, we, we, we kind of throw darts here. You know, we throw stuff yep. against the wall. We'll throw 10 things up there. A couple of them are going to go broke. And, you know, there's going to be a whole bunch that are kind of mediocre. And there's going to be a couple that are home runs. This was just one of the ones that went to zero. And they're going to get away with it. And I think it's unfortunate that they're going to get away with it because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. Well, they I mean, did not I, fulfill their responsibilities to their limited partners. Yeah, uh, and I suppose, you know, at least they have skin in the game, I suppose. They, they lost some money, too. But that's not the point. Well, you also, I mean, I, I believe that um, they had a, a higher FTX had a higher ESG rating for governance than Exxon Mobil, right? Um, yeah, the, guy was, today, <laughs> the guy, the guy today who uh, took over as the CEO, the, the liquidator, I guess you want to call him. He's the guy that liquidated Enron, by the way. Uh, he said it is the worst thing he's ever seen. That there were no controls whatsoever. Nobody was in charge. There was no. No type of internal course. They didn't even have a check this out. Now, how how in the hell, how in the hell does a company like Sequoia invest in FTX knowing, or at least hopefully they knew, they didn't even have a chief financial officer or a board. no CFO or a board. They have nothing. And it's just stunning to me the, the things that got overlooked here. Uh, and I think they got overlooked because of who Sam Bankman Freed was. He was this guy. He was, oh, MIT grad and, you know, came out of this trading place, uh, Jane Street, which, by the way, I mean, I, I, I saw a quote from somebody who worked with him at Jane Street and said, that, yeah, he's pretty smart. He also had not a, not one bit of morals. <laughs> he was just completely amoral, whatever that means. I, well, mean, I think that I, was, I, don't, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I read that online. I don't know if it's true or not, but I, I think it seems apropos, put it that way. Um, well, I think Look, that I, was, I think it got, yeah. like he's like you said, it got, it got overlooked because of who he is. His mother is uh, some type of of, of uh, fundraiser for the Democrats, uh, Democratic Party. His father is a, is a, a, a I think a law professor. Uh, so I mean, they're well connected people, very well connected people, and of course, I guess he was too. Uh, so you know, in, in a way, it's kind of like uh, you know Theranos and, and Elizabeth Holmes, who's going to get sentenced tomorrow, by the way. Um, and I think it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with her. Uh, I think that they ought to throw the book at her quite frankly, because I think it was fraud. Um, and of course the court has agreed and she's going to get sentenced tomorrow. She's asking for 18 months of, of house arrest. I'm like, are you kidding me? You, 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 I mean, look, I suppose with Elizabeth Holmes, you could say, well, she never sold a share, you know, so she went down with the ship, so to speak. I'll at least give her credit for that. I don't think Sam Bankman Free went down with the ship. I really don't. Uh, I don't have any way to prove that, but I suspect he's got money somewhere. So, I, yeah, I, I don't know where all this will lead. I think it will be interesting to see how she gets sentenced. If she gets a very stiff sentence, that might send a message. Maybe it does. Um, but, you know, in, in, a, in a way, you know what, Steve, too? I mean, think about this. Look, I, 2008. Uh, what happened in 2008, the, the fact that nobody big went to jail, yeah. quite frankly, is appalling. It really is. I mean, the things that went on in 2008, I, I mean, I, I mean, I, you could go from the, from the smallest guy to the biggest guy. You could go from the appraiser who knew he was fudging stuff, you know, to the, to the, 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 you know, the mortgage broker who was, who was, who was winking and nodding and, and doing these, these, uh, you know, these, these loans based on, on false credentials and false information, they knew what was going on. Uh, but you can go all the way to the top too, at the, at the banks and, you know, at the, uh, at the mortgage companies and so forth. They all knew what was going on and they, and they did it and nobody went to jail. Uh, so I think if you have that type of environment and people say, well, hell, they got away with it. I'll just give it a shot too. What, what, what's the worst that could happen here? And I can't think of any really big people who have committed fraud that have gone to jail over the last 10, 12 years. I don't know. Maybe there are some. I just don't remember them. Uh, so I think it's going to be interesting. Elizabeth Holmes get uh, sentenced tomorrow. Uh, if they throw the book at her, I think that would probably be a good thing. Uh, but this guy, Bankman Freed, they better get him back from the Bahamas, and they better prosecute him to the nth degree. Because if they don't, the, the conspiracy theories are going to run rampant. 
Uh, there already are, you know, people are saying, oh, well, he'll never get prosecuted because of all these politicians, because if he gets prosecuted and all this is going to come out about who the money went to and how it got spent and blah, 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 blah. So people are already saying that if you don't bring this guy and really throw the book at him, uh, bring him back and throw the book at him, it, it's going to, it's just going to make things worse. Well, and, and part uh, of the problem here is some of the conspiracy theories are turning out to be right. I mean, that, that, that the problem with discounting the ones that are completely crazy is once when, when the, some of the ones that sound sound crazy turn out to be correct. I mean, th this yeah, this, this, just because you know, you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, again, this, this was not a guy operating outside the system. This, this was a guy as deep inside the system as you can get. He he was he was. I mean, one of the things that did differentiate him that I think that was one of the few things he did that was clever is he he didn't take the libertarian mode. He didn't come and say, hey, I'm doing something outside the system. He said, I'm going to reform the system. I'm, I'm, I'm going to help regulate crypto. I'm going to work with the government bodies to, to make a better system. I'm going to improve the planet. I'm going to donate to the right causes. You know, I'm, you know, I'm somebody who okay. wants to make the world a better place. And, and you know, he, he put that artifice on there and he got in bed. I mean, with, with, you know, I've, I've seen some of the BlackRock commercials. They're doing the same thing. They're helping the planet out. That's what BlackRock's doing. But we both know, you know that ain't what BlackRock's doing. That they're trying to make money any way they legally can. In his case, he was trying to make money any money any way he could. Um, and what makes it legal for BlackRock is they're going to have enough separation here that they'll be able to claim they didn't know better. But 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 we know whether it's BlackRock or Sequoia, those guys were smart enough to kind of kind of sense what was going on here and just hope they could make the money before this blew up. Yeah, they were probably hoping to cash out before it blew up. But look. Bankman Freed was the face of what came, became known as effective altruism. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the, the term that got coined over the last year and a half, two years about people like him who supposedly were trying to do the right thing. Yes, they were capitalists, but they were trying to do the right thing and trying to do things in the right way. Uh, I, personally, I think the fact that he cited uh, FTX in the Bahamas from the beginning tells you something. I think he knew from the very beginning it was going to be a scam. Uh, yeah. I think he set it up that way. Uh, I think he planned for it. Uh, and he has admitted, I mean, well, I admitted, no, I take that back. Someone who who had a, an exchange with him by email, leaked some emails this morning where he's going, yeah, it was all just a, it was all just a sham. It was just, you know, my public face, this effective altruism thing. The guy is, uh, well, you know, maybe he should be on the fed. I think he's a sociopath. Yep. Uh, yeah. No, so, well, you well, know. I'm going to date myself here, but back in the, the dot com bubble. I was having a conversation with 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 a, a top VC in Silicon Valley, a uh, private conversation. And he just said, matter of fact, like, we're pushing these things through as fast as we can before this comes to an end. Um, you know, the the the, the kind of sad truth is that the people at the top, most of them, they know it now that now they're not going to go to jail. Um, they're not going to get arrested. Um, and, and by know it, he wasn't saying I'm investing in frauds, I'm investing in criminal activity. He was basically saying, I know it's a speculative bubble. I know it's not going to be worth what we're selling it for. And I'm getting it out the door as fast as I can to make my money. And, you know, the little guy can take the losses. And and a lot. Well, and you know what, Steve? I, I'll tell you something. This is an interesting topic, right? So I, there's been this idea for a number of years that uh, particularly over the last 10 years where you had private company stock trading in the private market uh, among people uh, fairly liquid not liquid like it was on an exchange but liquid and there was this idea that look the, the idea of a qualified investor this has always been uh the, the kind of the argument was hey you know if you if you limit the number of people who can invest in these startups uh, to people who have a certain net worth and a certain income, then what you're doing is you're cutting out the little guy. You know, all the big guys get to take advantage of it and they get to buy in at these better prices. And then they flip it to the public when it goes public in the IPO and the, I, and, and, and the public ends up holding the bag. And I think, you know, you look back over the last couple of years, the most obvious example of that was uh, were, were the SPACs and so forth. Uh, but if you think about it, look, the crypto space was was the ability of average people to invest in startups without the uh without the the restriction of being a qualified investor this was the wild west and you know what a lot of people got shot yep uh a lot of people lost a lot of money and the probably that they couldn't afford to lose and uh and this was this is what happens when you have a completely unregulated market 
So while I understand the idea of saying, look, uh, you know, this qualified investor thing is kind of locking people out. I get that. But if you're going to allow anybody to invest in these things, you have to have a level of, uh, of regulation, a level of disclosure that, that didn't exist in the crypto land. And, uh, you know, that's the problem. And this, uh, disclosure solves a lot of problems. And so I don't know. It, it's an interesting question, right? Should we let everybody invest in, in private companies? Well, in some ways you can, right? You can start a business. Anybody can start a business. You can do a small offering among friends and family and raise money to start a business. Um, but if you want to invest with the big boys, you want to invest alongside Sequoia or whoever, well, then you got to be a qualified investor. You got to have a certain net worth. You got to have a certain amount of income. You got to essentially be able to afford to lose the money. And so you get locked out of those, out of the best deals. Um, well, yeah. Well, I also I think know. it's important to, to realize whenever you do a trade, there's another party doing that trade that for some reason thinks they're getting a better deal out of it usually. Um, and, and so you you need to think think through why am I buying this? Why am I selling this? Why, why am I doing this value? Because I think one of the things we've seen is the system may not protect you. Politicians, regulators, um, celebrity pitch people, the, the system may not protect you, but, but the laws of economics still hold. If something's worth something, it's ultimately going to be worth something. And if it's worth nothing, it's ultimately going to be worth nothing. I mean, I, I think your best defense here is, is do your homework or have somebody who can do the homework for you that they have some level of trust in, but but don't trust the system. Well, this this idea that for every buyer there's a seller is obviously true in public markets and all markets, right? So I always wonder, do people think about this, say at the bottom in 2008, market just comes unglued and you got to bounce. I don't know if you remember, you know, the, the specifics, you got to bounce in December and then you just fail to get in, in, in January, February. You didn't make the low until March. I mean, I'm going to tell you something. 2008 wasn't was was bad but the worst part of it i think the absolute worst part was january and february of 2009 because it just felt like good god I man this thing is never going to end so here's my question if you were a seller during that time who do you think was on the other side of the trade yeah who was doing the buying you know and then and then you have you know the same people will come out and go oh, you know there's always these insiders who know and they they get they get inside info no they don't in most cases, the guy that you're selling to when you're selling at the bottom, he's just some guy with, with, with guts, some guy with faith in the system, some guy with faith in capitalism, faith in, in, in America, whatever it is. But he's got guts. And that's what it takes when you're in a bear market to buy at the lows. Most people can't do it. Um, and the same thing at the highs. Listen, if you're buying at the high, you know, if you're buying in, in, in December of 2021, who were you buying from? Who was that guy? Because he was pretty damn smart. You know what? He's going to be the same guy you're, you're, you're selling to when you're selling at the bottom. That's who he is. Hopefully, it's me. <laughs> we were certainly selling in late 21. Hopefully, we'll be the ones that buy on the, on, on, the, on the final low in this bear market. We did some buying over the summer, but not a lot. I've said all along since we made those lows in June that you need to think about buying here. This is you're down 25% already. It's not time to be thinking about selling. You got to start thinking about buying and you got to look around. And you know what? We're starting to see differentiation in the market where, you know, now you can buy things based on value, based on what it's really worth. That's what investing is all about. Yeah. You know, and, and that's not what cryptocurrencies were about. So no, I, I think that's a good point. I mean, security comes from really getting good value. It, it doesn't come on you know, counting on regulators. It doesn't come on counting on VCs or private equity firms or celebrity right. spokespeople. Um, it, it really comes from doing your homework and, and getting a good value for the asset you're buying. Look, if you buy something at a good price, if you get a good value for your money, uh, if you're buying something at a low PE, low price to sales, low price to book, whatever the case may be, however, whatever your criteria are, uh, and it goes down in price. It doesn't mean you were necessarily wrong. You may be wrong, but not necessarily. Uh, if you're really confident in your ability to analyze the company, you do what Warren Buffett does and buy more. Yep. Um, so you know it, it's a you've got to be confident in your analysis. But if you are, that's what you do. Um, that's why. That's why the other thing too is, I, and this is another thing that I've had problems with in talking to investors is this idea of all or nothing. It's like. I'm going to be all in stocks or all out of stocks. I don't understand that mentality. It just doesn't even make sense to me. 
It's the same thing with crypto, right? So what was the thing there for a while was uh, good luck staying poor. I saw one today on 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 Twitter that said, yeah, the how did they put it? Uh, tired, good luck staying poor. And uh, hot was good luck staying out of prison. Uh, so all those guys that were saying good luck staying poor, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not poor.